Hi everybody and welcome to a new episode of the Terra Venture Podcast. As promised, I was going to talk about what I discussed from the last topic regarding about the 30th anniversary of Power Rangers and as well as recent developments regarding any returning actors for the upcoming 30th anniversary, particularly a reunion for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So, what what I recalled from and preluding to today's episode of the podcast, I did talk, I wanted to talk about why JDF is not coming back for the anniversary, and also talk a little bit about White Dragon, Legend of the White Dragon, which is his new Power Rangers sort of-esque project, because um, it's just something that had, you know, got, got to my attention when discussing this, um... Theoretically speaking, as a longtime Power Rangers fan, and even as a fan of Tommy Oliver, yeah, I've been a fan of Tommy until he was like the White Ranger. Now, I've I, I know that for a lot of people back in my original run of this video series, I used to be so cruel and harsh on Tommy being the Green Ranger, and especially with the mass amount of MMPR nostalgia that we've had in the last couple of years, where. You know, especially back when Bandai still did the lice, you know, still did the toy, the legacy toys for Power Rangers for specifically Mighty Morphin. And once I got my hands on that legacy figure of the Green Ranger, the of the legacy collection figures and legacy Dragon Zord, I'm working on getting Hasbro's Power Rangers Lightning Collection Mighty Morphin Green Ranger since I already have Tommy as the White Ranger for the Lightning Collection. Um, and I also need to get him as the Red Zeal Ranger. And when Dino Thunder Black comes out next year in 2023 and Lord Draken. But really, though, it was damn time that Jason David Frank, the original Green Ranger, White Ranger, Red Zeo, uh, Dino Thunder Black, Red Turbo um, and such, Tommy, it was time that Tommy Oliver, the character, needs to be retired also since Jason David Frank had made it clear back at Power Morphicon this year in 2020, Power Morphicon 2022, two months ago, on the in his in the panel for Legend of the White Dragon, that he stated that he is no longer um, doing Power Rangers anymore. He's tapping up. It was time for him to get a little darker. It's time for him to uh, get off the Kids Networks channel. He said and stuff like that. If you go back and watch that little clip. There's, I already have a link for that little small clip from someone who said, who heard, um, heard him say that statement at that um, panel for Legend of the White Dragon, and I suggest you check out that clip or watch that little small clip or the full panel, since I already also have a Power Morphicon Seven playlist from someone who was at the convention. I did not go to this year's Power Morphicon and and all that, but I hope next two years from now I will come to Power Morphicon and meet, like I said many times before. But, you know, it was time that JDF retired from the Power Rangers franchise. I felt that Dimensions in Danger from Super Ninja Steel was it for Tommy. And I think with him with the Master Morpher, that was about enough for him. Because there's just not much that they can do with him anymore. Like, how many times do you want to see Tommy again for another um, anniversary? Let alone the big 30th coming up. And with the 30th anniversary on the horizon... You know, next year, you know, yeah, people are going to be like, man, once we get this Mighty Morphin reunion, where's Tommy? Look, I'm going to tell you straight, we don't need Tommy anymore. I mean, and I've been saying, and I've been wanting to say this ever since Dimensions in Danger, that while that may have been a Tommy fan, fanboy, fangirl, glory hog sort of anniversary celebrating 25 years of Power Rangers in 2018, but... There have been over a hundred at this time as of like Dino Fury and Cosmic Fury. We have now over a hundred and forty five some Power Rangers that could have deserved more hero worship than Tommy. We've had so many Rangers over the years and none of them, even from Ranger teams ranging from like teams that he was on like Mighty Morphin and Zeo. 
And then when you had Turbo, then in space, and then, you know, Ranger teams that we could have gotten hero worship from, from Ranger teams like the Galaxy Rangers, uh, the Time Force Rangers, the Mystic Force Rangers, Di uh, even, you know, any Rangers, not Tommy, from Dino Thunder, which was another team of his, like Rangers like Trent and Kira that could have gotten hero worship, or Rangers from SPD like Jack or Sky that could have had hero worship than Tommy, or Doggy Kruger. Rangers from Operation Overdrive like Tizon and Rose that could have had hero worship than Tommy. Rangers from like RPM like Dylan that could have had better hero worship than Tommy. Even though even though Dylan was that season and while the other Rangers had their own thing going on, but RPM was really more Dylan's a season. Heck, I mean Mega Force that season could have been more like Robo Knights' season for hero worship. Even though he is the only character from Mega Force that had the most development of the bunch. Dino Charge. You had Rangers like Kendall and Shelby and Coda and Chase and Ivan and, and Riley and Tyler that could have had Hero Worship than Tommy. Then even like Ninja Steel, which we last saw Tommy in for the 25th anniversary episode. Rangers like Sarah and Calvin or Haley could have been more worshipped as hero, uh, hero Rangers that were on actual heroes than Tommy. I mean, we had so many Power Rangers over the course of the franchise that we could have gotten more focus on over the course of the franchise. Nothing wrong with Tommy, no matter how popular he was of a character. Much like how Wolverine is a very popular character in X-Men in the Marvel Universe. Or how popular uh, Batman is in the DC Universe. And of, of all the Justice League. Or, uh, I don't even want to go there bringing up like Goku from the Dragon Ball franchise. And how he's overly worshipped among its fandom. So you need to understand that there have been other characters that we could have had the same amount of hero worship and even, again, within the Power Rangers uh, universe in its own realm. Like, even for Mighty Morphin Rangers that we've had that were on Tommy, that were with Tommy. Like, Rangers like Jason or Kimberly or Adam or Billy, uh, they all, could, or even Rocky, well, even though, yes, Rocky, but even they could have had the same amount of hero worship as uh, Tommy. But nope, because remember, MMPR was the Tommy Oliver show featuring the Power Rangers. Zeo was the Tommy Oliver show featuring the Power Rangers. Dino Thunder was the Tommy Oliver show featuring the Power Rangers. Because, like, as if we want Power Rangers to rely on this one man his actor and all of the different colors and suits and powers and zords that he had over the course of nearly 30 years i mean look i like tommy too but christ like we had so many other rangers besides tommy and none of them have even gotten the same amount of worship than tommy I mean, I mean, damn. I mean, if you go back and look at Ranger teams from, like, my favorite generation of Power Rangers, the post-Zordon days, like in Time Force, like, Rangers like Jen, Wes, and Eric, or even, like, Eric, I mean, the Quantum Ranger, you know, as badass of a Six Ranger he was, and his, you know, him with the Silver Guardians, he, even he could have had the same amount of hero worship as Tommy, since, after all, why do you think Eric back in Forever Red... When he when Tommy left and departed from the other Red Rangers, how Eric made a mention about how he would, you know, he, he would take his Q-Rex and eat Tommy's Dragon Zord for lunch. Because basically Eric, you know, let's face it, the Q-Rex had way more firepower than Dragon Zord. Because Q-Rex was way more freaking badass than the Dragon Zord. I mean, I will always love Dragon Zord, but the Q-Rex was more beast than the Dragon Zord. <clears throat> Although when I was watching the Sentai, although look, uh, looking upon some of the mecha for um, Zenkaiger, which I know since Power Rangers ain't going to adapt no more Sentai after uh, Cosmic Fury, but if they did do some Zenkaiger elements, you know, Zenkaiger had mecha that was reminiscent of past Zords that we had from those Sentais we did adapt for Power Rangers, and among them, with that one uh, Zenkaiser mecha, I'm, the name escapes me, but I know what it is. It's a combination of Dragon Caesar from Zoo Ranger, aka Dragon Zord, and uh, the V-Rex, also known as the Q-Rex uh, for um, Cornosaurus Rex here. Um, if you know from Gokaiger, you know that if they did adapt that mecha for Power Rangers, 
even though Super Mega Force Orion already had uh, his Q-Rex Drill Zord that was a combination of Dragon Zord, but also had elements of three other Dino themed robots for Dino themed Zords for respective six Rangers. I mean, there's other Rangers that could have had uh, the same amount of hero worship than Tommy, um, as Tommy, or than him. Like, even Merrick from Wild Force, the Lunar Wolf, like, div given his backstory, him being cursed by the Zenaku Wolf Mask, he could have had the amount of hero worship uh, uh, than Tommy. Um, let's think of other Rangers that could have been better than Tommy in some ways. I mean, if you look at Lightspeed Rescue, it seems like all of them are all six Rangers. I mean, there are way more better six Rangers then Tommy, even Trent from Dino Thunder, even though Dino Thunder White is questionable, like, no, Dino Thunder only had, like, five Rangers. So, how is there f six Dino Rangers if, knowing that the Triassic, yeah, whatever, but that's a discussion, but, you know, Lightspeed Rescue, I mean, you look at another six Ranger that paralleled what Tommy went through a little bit, Ryan is the Titanium Ranger, our first American-made Power Ranger. Given how he was abducted by Diabolico when he, Captain Mitchell, and Dana were on that cliff after that little car accident. And when Diabolico took child Ryan away from Captain Mitchell and Dana. And then, like, you know, when Ryan became of age, age 20, and then he was, uh, he took the titanium morph for the fight the Rangers for only two episodes. And then he had to realize what he was doing was not right. And then when he broke out of the influence of Diabolico, he was cursed with the, the Cobra tattoo and stuff like that. You know, Rangers like Ryan, even though as much as I understand due to budget cuts with Lightspeed Rescue, they had to reduce the amount of time we had him as, you know, on the team as a Ranger. Just have him around later on and figure him a way to find a way to seal the demons and Queen Benshira away. You know, Rangers like Ryan had better hero could have had better hero worship than Tommy. You want another example? Look at Lost Galaxy. Like, we had a freaking Power Ranger who died in the line of duty, Kendricks. <clears throat> and even she could have had the same amount of hero worship as Tommy. Even though Kendricks was a very undervalued, underdeveloped character, but she was still a part of the team. But also, she was the Ranger that died, but given the behind-the-scenes tumult with her actress with her cancer when filming Lost Galaxy. You get what I mean? So, I feel like all of those different Rangers we could have had over the course of the franchise um, that isn't Tommy, they could have had the same amount of hero worship. You know, as much as I don't, as much as I can't stand Red Rangers like Jaden from Samurai, but okay, well, now that makes sense because, again, I'm just, you know, speaking of which, I'm halfway through. Um, Watching Shinkenger and basically Shinkenger is the better series while Samurai is well, you know, still not great And I'm already also currently binge watching Power Ranger Samurai on Toku uh, Toku um, Zilla dot, uh, dot com where I'm binge watching Power Rangers and Super Sentai stuff mainly Sentai Because there's no way where I where else I can watch Sentai besides Power Rangers. So And even as much as I can't stand Jaden even he had the amount of hero worship in full display in Samurai in its two seasons. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, Tommy, it was time that the sh that that the franchise retired his character. We don't need Jason David Frank anymore since uh, now I need to discuss Legend of the White Dragon in a way. You know, I've heard about Legend of the White Dragon. Um, basically, it's Bad in the Sun's project with... Um, JDF and a few former Power Ranger actors consisting of Jason Font from Time Force, Red Ranger, uh, Serena Vincent who played Maya, Lost Galaxy Yellow, C.R. Hanna, Gia, Super Me Megaforce, Super Megaforce Yellow, and you know, they, they were bringing probably just those three and also including JDF's own daughter Jenna, Jenna Frank in the piece, because Legend of the White Dragon... You know, upon seeing stuff about it, I was getting very excited for the film, despite being me being a uh, JDF fan in a way. But realizing the 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 when the film comes out, it's really gonna be more of a JDF vehicle for his fans, and and you know like how it is, you know, exploiting more of his ego, and you know how JDF can be an egomaniac of all the Power Ranger actors and of all the Mighty Morphin actors. 
he is a complete egomaniac. Just saying, but like, you know, I look I like the idea of Legend of the White Dragon. I like that they're doing more darker, you know, taking a few former Power Ranger actors from select seasons with him that have been very dear, very close to with them, like Jason Font, CR uh uh, C.R. Hanna and Serena Vincent to be a part of his new uh, film. Now, I know that the original concept trailer of Legend of the White Dragon, I remember watching that trailer for Legend of the White Dragon not so long ago after watching the Power Rangers Street Fighter crossover short um, that they did just to promote Legacy Wars. And in that, in that original Legend of the White Dragon trailer, they originally had not only Ciara Hanna and Jason Font, but they also had three other Power Rangers alumni uh, that could have been a part of Legend of the White Dragon because it looked more like a more grimdark Power Ranger-like film with actual Power Ranger actors in it. Johnny on Bosch, you know, he was just wearing something black signifying that, you know, Legend of the White Dragon could have been some Power Ranger-like project, given the colors. Johnny on Bosch was, you know, who played Adam, the second Black Ranger, and twice a green ranger for zeo and turbo you know um christiani who played sarah the pink ninja steel ranger and yoshi sadarso who played uh coda the blue dino charge ranger they were going to be in this film alongside font who played west the red time force ranger um and Hana, who played Gia, the yellow Mega Force, the Super Mega Force Ranger, alongside JDF, who played all his different versions the green Mighty Morphin Ranger, Mighty Morphin White, Red Zeo, and all that. But since Legend of the White Dragon, I get that they want to do their own sort of thing. It's very similar to Power Rangers, and they want to do a more darker sort of Power Ranger like project, you know, for uh, Power Rangers fans. You know, I guess if I do, I wouldn't be surprised if I do watch Legend of the White Dragon. I'll be like, man, this is going to be like so much better than that Power Slash Ranger short film, but but not by much. Because after all, as much as I, you know, I get that us older Power Ranger fans want something more grim, dark, and edgier with the brand, like, well, not me, of course, even though I'm doing something similar like that with Lost the Galaxy, personally, spoiler alert, but um, I just don't understand, like, you know, once we get Legend of the White Dragon... Uh, and when that film comes out next year in 2023 on Bat in the Sun's YouTube channel, uh, Bat in the Sun's YouTube channel, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this ends up being more viral than those project than those than than that um, fan film I mentioned. I won't be surprised if Legend of the, because again, Legend of the White Dragon, Legend of the White Dragon, like the thing is with this project is that um. I do like the idea of the fact that it's um, it's different in, in ways with Power Rangers. It's something that I guess so I don't think it's something that I would want also. But even though I w I'm going to watch it when it comes out on YouTube, but I'm just going to keep my hopes up very low. Even though I could, even when they when they did that panel for the thing at Power Morphicon, we could have gotten. Uh, I couldn't get even get a good glimpse of what the trailer looked like or a little small sneak preview of it. And after hearing an F-bomb in that sneak preview at Morphicon, um, I, I mean, I wish they would show the trailer at Morphicon with someone filming that, that panel, but I guess, no, like, Bat in the Sun will catch a person, someone uploading that whole thing onto YouTube and then give them a copyright claim or something because, uh, yeah, because... You know, you can only if you go back to that Legend of the White pa uh, Dragon Power Morphicon panel, um, you can only and when they get to that preview sneak preview of the of the thing, you can only you can only hear audio, but you can't see much of what's really going on. And even I had a hard gauge of what was going on in that sneak preview of that trailer. So therefore, when uh, when we get uh, the full uh, another full trailer later on, um, I hope that we. Uh, they show more of the film and see what it's like because you know i was very skeptic about you know some power ranger alumni being in this with him even though jason font is in the film cr hannah is somewhere in the film also serena vincent since um well i've softened up on serena vincent for a little bit you know despite 
Well, I'll talk about Serena another time when discussing anything Lost Galaxy related. And while I do mind that um, those three particular Power Ranger alumni are in the film, but at what cost? And what's Jason Font's role of his character with uh, JDF's Eric Reed character going to be like? Ciara Hanna, what her character is going to be like in Legend of the White Dragon. Who is the main antagonist in Legend of the White Dragon? So... I think this is one of those instances where, okay, Legend of the White Dragon, well, since looking at how Hasbro wants to do something original with Power Rangers after Cosmic Fury, thinking about that once again, is that um, if Power Rangers, starting with Cosmic Fury, wants to skew away from any influence from Sentai, Legend of the White Dragon wants to skew away from any influence or complete resemblance of Power Rangers as much as possible. So that's what they're doing also, because it's already foreshadowing the future of Power Rangers and what the actors that have been on it, uh, especially former Ranger actors, are doing. Even though we never did got that one Power Ranger film that I know never did saw it the light of day, but it was, but I saw a lot of, you know, promotional material for it called The Order with all those former Power Ranger actors in that. And then again, since JDF wanted to do that, since JDF's Green Ranger solo grimdark movie didn't make it legend of the white dragon would eventually become that final product of it in similarity and even though we already had the bat in the sun superpower beat down between uh the green ranger and white ranger versus ryu from street fighter and scorpion from mortal Kombat, instead but legend of the white dragon is basically what J jason david frank's dream uh dream movie of a green ranger grimdark solo movie could have been and but then again with uh him with three other former power ranger actors alongside him on this project um let's see how this goes but until then i'm just gonna wait until i see another trailer for this thing and then when the movie comes out on youtube and i may probably do a review on it on the podcast and get my thoughts on it because, you know, as much as I didn't like, again, Power Slash Rangers, I I know I haven't watched any other Power Ranger fan film other than looking back on what I've been doing with my fan film stuff. But but still. But yeah, but I felt like it was time for JDF to retire from Power Rangers because, you know, we don't need them. And the Mighty Morphin, like I said in the last episode, if when they do that Mighty Morphin reunion special... They'll probably figure a way to acknowledge Tommy's absence and why he ain't coming back and resume his, uh, you know, bring out his little gimmicky Master Morpher again. Um, but like I said back last time with the, about the Dimensions in Danger, if Rocky and Catherine came back in Dimensions in Danger with their respective Ranger powers chosen for the anniversary episode for that, why couldn't they have Master Morphers for Rocky and Cat and with Rocky having a Master Morpher for both his Mighty Morphin and Zeo Red and Blue powers? And Catherine with all three of her pink ranger powers, Mighty Morphin, Zeo, and Turbo. And, like, what's wrong? They couldn't, like, uh, do that. But, but again, but, but therefore, I just feel like um, we needed to move on from Jason David Frank and his involvement with Power Rangers. And I get that the reason why Legend of the White Dragon has still been fully conjured up and been in some years in development for some quite some time it's because, you know, he's been very unimpressed with how Hasbro is handling Power Rangers. And, and well, they're still going to make merchandise of Tommy with J JDF's likeness on that. Even though, we, so far, when we get Dino Thunder Black, that will be like the last time we'll have any, uh, and, and likely the Red Turbo Ranger with Tommy on it. It will be the last time we'll have anything Tommy related for the Lightning Collection and just focus on... Um, other Power Rangers that need more focus because we have over a hundred, almost nearly a hundred and fifty Power Rangers uh, to choose from than Tommy and um, and his actor behind the character. So we need to focus on other characters besides him for once. Is all I'm saying. So I hope this wraps up everything about how I feel about this because you know he's done enough for this franchise. But like you said at the end of Dimensions in Danger, he may be not be a part of the franchise anymore and moved on to much bigger endeavors. Power Rangers Legacy is in good hands.